Early in the 1840s, Chicago was known as the Boomtown, being the 92nd most populous city in the United States with about 4,000 people. Doesn't sound like much right now considering the population now being nearly 3 million. By the 1850s, Chicago was a busy metropolitan area, having completed canals, railroads, its first steam locomotives, steam-powered elevators, and with the arrival of the telegraph. Chicago's thriving economy attracted large numbers of new immigrants who set up new businesses, factories, barns, and houses. In the course of the next 30 years, the population increased at such a rapid rate from only 4,000 to over 300,000 people resided in Chicago. Until, in 1871, from October 8 to October 10, Chicago burned in a devastating fire. The fire destroyed thousands of buildings, killed an estimated 300 people, left about 100,000 people homeless, and caused an estimated damage of $200 million. With misdirected fire equipment arriving too late, it was only when rainfall and water from the lake that the huge fire and the continuing destruction was brought to a halt after two days straight of burning Chicago. What does chaos stand for? The chiefs have arrived on the scene, especially that day when they were able to do nothing to calm down that fire. Serious fires were frequent in Chicago, but no one expected the event of the night of October 8th. The city had gone months without rain. The people suffered a long period of hot, dry, windy conditions, and a major fire the previous night had exhausted the firemen and damaged their equipment. And with most of the structures made from wood, including the streets and sidewalks, it kindled the fire even more from block to block until the fire grew so powerful it consumed the supposedly fireproof stone and brick buildings. How did it all happen? Legend has it that a cow being milked by Mrs. Catherine O'Leary kicked over a kerosene lantern igniting a barn fire that spread across 2,000 acres of Chicago. Knock knock, who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? Cows go moo. The famous tale of Mrs. O'Leary's cow became the word of people's mouths after the colossal fire and has been passed down ever since. The old folk used to sing, Late one night when we were all in bed, Mrs. O'Leary lit a lantern in the shed. Her cow kicked it over then winked her eye and said, There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. It all began on the night of October 8th a Sunday at about 9 p.m. at the barn of Patrick O'Leary and Catherine O'Leary. The O'Leary family were immigrants from Ireland who lived at 137 DeCoven Street in Chicago. They had a small dairy business and she routinely milked the cows in the barn behind their cottage. That night, Catherine O'Leary and her husband Patrick, who was a Civil War veteran, had already retired for the night and were fast asleep when they heard their neighbors calling out about a fire that broke out in the barn. Some accounts rumor about a cow kicking over a lantern and starting the fire that was quickly responded to by firemen, while other rumors tell another tale. The other rumor that spread in the neighborhood was that a boarder in the O'Leary's house named Daniel Pegleg Sullivan had sneaked into the barn to have a few drinks with his friend and the fire was started in the barn's hay when they were smoking pipes. Others say it is possible that the fire began from an ember which blew from a nearby chimney. No one will really know what happened that night at the barn of Mrs. O'Leary, but what isn't disputed is the fact that the fire caused a whole lot of damage. Starting from rumors of the neighborhood, it soon took off when a newspaper reporter, Michael Ahern, wrote an article about Mrs. O'Leary's cow kicking over a kerosene lantern. According to official reports, when authorities were investigating the fire, they heard the testimony of Mrs. O'Leary and her husband a month later in an article in the New York Times on November 29, 1871, headlined Mrs. O'Leary's Cow. In the article, Catherine O'Leary testified before the police and fire commissioners that she and her husband had been asleep when two men came to alert them of the fire. Patrick O'Leary also said that he did not know how the fire began, and he had also been asleep and woke up when he heard the neighbors. 
The board also questioned Daniel Sullivan, who lived directly across from O'Leary, who was the first to alert Patrick to the fire. Sullivan picked up the name Pegleg for his wooden limb. He claimed to have attended the party and left about half past nine. When he stepped out, he saw a fire in the O'Leary's barn and ran across the street screaming fire, 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 and headed straight for the fire so that he could save the cows. The authorities then concluded that the O'Leary's were not in the barn when the fire began, and although the precise cause of the fire is unknown, it may have been started from an ember that blew from the chimney on that windy night. What happened to the O'Leary family after that? Miraculously, their house was not burnt as the flames spread outward from their property, but that only added to the constant rumors circulating in the neighborhood. Before the fire, no one took notice of Patrick and Catherine O'Leary, who lived with their five children on the west side of the city. Patrick was a laborer and Catherine sold milk from door to door, keeping her five cows in the barn. Sadly, because of all the constant questioning and botherance of the people, the O'Leary sold their cottage on De Coven Street in 1879 and moved many times, eventually settling in South Halstead Street on what was then the far south side. Mrs. O'Leary lived the rest of her life in seclusion, only leaving the residence to attend daily errands. 24 years later, she died of acute pneumonia, but the real reason may have been due to a broken heart from all the harassment she faced about the destruction caused by the fire. Even though, to majority of the public, Mrs. O'Leary and her cow was the center of the Great Chicago Fire, some even say it was a meteor that split into pieces as it fell to earth, setting off simultaneous catastrophic fires in Chicago and Peshtigo, Wisconsin. It happened so that the same day the Great Chicago Fire began, a fire broke out in Peshtigo, Wisconsin, in which more than 1,000 people lost their life. Historical records show that there were over 20 fires throughout Chicago during the week right before the Great Fire broke out. Fortunately, Chicago's infrastructure, including sewer, water, and transportation systems, remained mostly intact. Rebuilding efforts that took place soon after the fire led to a spurring economic growth and the development of some of the world's first skyscrapers. Within the next 10 years, the city's population had nearly doubled, and Chicago was well on its way to becoming the major city it remains today. So if Mrs. O'Leary's cow didn't kick over the lantern, what were the Great Fire's true origins? First of all, many things about the case make absolutely no sense, and a few simple questions really end up proving her innocence. Like why would Mrs. O'Leary set fire on her own property, risking her own life and her family's, and why would she set fire to the barn, killing her cows, her source of income? I mean, I'm pretty sure she would have been able to calculate the consequences before setting such a fire. And while the story of Mrs. O'Leary and her cow is just a rumor, the legendary tale still lives on. Lithographs of the scene were produced in the late 1800s, and popular songs and even movies were made down the years. The real blame of the enormous fire actually lies with the fact that a long drought over a very hot summer made Chicago prone to fires, loosely enforced fire codes, and the fact that the city was built almost entirely of wood. And turns out, the newspaper reporter, Michael Ahern, admitted that he and other reporters made up the story, and an article was posted to correct his account after he died in 1927. But finally, in 1997, the Chicago City Council passed a resolution exonerating Catherine and her cow from all the blame. If you liked our video, share it with your friends and family, and come to our channel for more videos like this one.